So I found it easy to make my first few videos. And now my challenge is not making videos, but having a life. Getting away from the computer, getting out with my dog. And today's video will be one of those days. I just went on a drive. I drove three hours away. And it was really good. Good for my soul. And good to see all these wonders all around me. This photo here is just on the way out of town. This canyon that I've driven through in haste. And it's hard to want to stop your car when you're moving so quickly. But that's exactly what I did here. And for everyone, hitting the road will mean something else. Some people are looking for purely escape and wanting to reach their destination. Less concerned with things along the way. And personally, I always have and continue to look for signs of ancient civilizations. It's always been a passion of mine, even before I really knew what I was looking at. But these days seeming absolutely obvious everywhere we look. In this video, we'll explore some mines and ghost towns of Utah. Welcome. And the scale and size of these buildings is almost incomprehensible to us. And that's why they're hidden in plain sight. Very easy to tell people that these were formed over millions of years. And obviously if they were still in good shape, we could comprehend what we're looking at. But they're so tattered and destroyed that it requires a trained eye to comprehend what we're seeing here. And on this particular day, I was seeking minds, looking for a way in, as always, and just trying to deepen my understanding by observing my surroundings. Eventually, Chief and I ended up in this place called Price, Utah. And what I found is these piles of rocks that appear to be rocks scattered along a train track, seeming to be the same rock that they use under the tracks. And upon careful examination, these rocks appeared to be melted metal. And I ended up collecting a whole bunch of samples, you can see one here, metal that has been turned into a popcorn rock, cooked out so hard, and I believe further run through some kind of rock or gravel crusher. And it was a very windy day. I sent my drone up to get a better look at my surroundings and quickly lost control. I still did manage to get some nice photos, but this is to give you an idea of the place I was at. Down here we had what looked like train tracks and ruins, and a site that I've come to understand as a melted building. Now if this was the first thing I'd ever seen, I would say no. But having seen examples of better preserved sites like this, in which we can enter into the chambers, and in present day, many people still living in such remains and ruins. It seems pretty clear what we're seeing here. And it looked like this had been a blast site. And I did come to find out that the narrative tells us there had been a mining explosion here, which had killed several miners. But naturally, I was suspicious of this story. But this giving you an idea of where I was, and this looking like some mega castle, and oftentimes it's so mind-blowing what I see. I feel like a detective and my heart starts pounding and feel like I'm being watched. Here's an example of a piece of metal. And they were real clinky. I would bang them together. Unbelievable. Piles and piles of this metal rock. Burnt. Found everywhere. And of course we are told there was a mining explosion. But this just looks like something else. And we'll discuss that narrative in a minute here. This particular county is also called Carbon County, not far away from the Castle Valley. And Utah is so full of mind-blowing things. This is a particular area that most people will never see. And here there were actually some modern bits of mining junk scattered in. And I see things like this everywhere. 
In the middle of nowhere, this just happened to be a great concentration, and instead of being scattered on the desert floor, was accumulated in piles, seemingly by man. And here we can absolutely see metal. And was it damage from the big reset? Or was this some kind of micro reset? I'm not sure, but what is clear is that this is the remains of melted, mangled metals fused with concrete, and in some cases brick, which I hope to show. And this really does seem like the result of plasma pinging and popping, bubbling and disrupting the environment. Here we're simply seeing a byproduct of the actual event. Here is a piece that you can see down here. The piece has just kept getting better, as if I had any doubts, another one would be revealed that made it absolutely clear of what had taken place here. This piece I actually have in my shed now. I left with pockets full and just mind-blowing. From the casual glancer's perspective, just piles of rocks, but not at all the case. Many of you are thinking I should take care of my cuticles, but I'll do no such thing. This one was amazing. I'm holding two pieces in this moment, and of course I make videos to hear what you guys think. We're all in this together. And here's a little look at where I was. I was down here, where my pointer is. And here is an example of brick. You see how the brick remained? A little pocket of brick for some reason. And it has run down and stained the side of this old concrete. You don't see that same red staining anywhere else. And there were chunks of brick broken up into small pieces, but you could still see their corners. And this wall was absolutely fascinating. Let's see if I get a better look at it. A massive wall would look like a train that used to come along here. And this may have been the entrance to this building. And perhaps this used to be an opening. This very square section now filled in by a thinner rock curtain. And I'm only an hour out of town and yet completely distracted. At this point, I really slipped into tourist mode. And here we can see this rock wall. And it's had a cement facade over the top and it's broken away here, revealing this very old rock wall. Here again we can see the deep red. We can see an old level or a road. And I'm sure you all have seen this, as I have time and time again. What seems like roads leading to nowhere, in inaccessible places, some of the clues that we have to what we're really seeing here. Clearly it looks like I can access some of these passageways. Now that I'm looking from afar, especially these two right here, two levels that have collapsed and do not look natural. Here, I think what we're seeing is a building. Now, we'd be led to believe that man and the Department of Transportation scraped this clean to make this road, but if that were the case, there'd be no reason for it to be so wall-like. Clear up to the top. We can see a lot of interesting things. Perhaps an entryway up here. Definitely some entryways down here. Some have been refaced, possibly for mining or disguise. A lot of interesting anomalies in this little area. Here are these monuments I found really interesting. Here they've thrown a few pieces of brick in. And it seemed like they might have had another purpose, part of some infrastructure. This particular story we're told in 1897, Butch Cassidy robbed a train. I do live in the area that Butch Cassidy was supposed to have resided in. The Lawless Zone, as they called it. An area that had not been charted and had no jurisdiction, we're told, back in the day. And here we have another plaque on again a very old seeming monument that has burn marks on the top. And here we're told a little story about the coal industry. Beginning in the 1870s, the railroad comes through from Denver to Salt Lake in 1883, and Carbon County is the leading producer of coal and coke in America. By now I'm suspicious, of course, of everything pertaining to our history, and so I'm reading these narratives with a grain of salt, but looking all around this piece of 
What they would tell us is sandstone is very interesting. And even what looks like a piece of petrified wood embedded into this concrete slab. Very interesting sculpture, looking very eerie. Telling us of the Castle Gate mine disaster. So earlier I mentioned it looked like they'd blasted the castle's gate closed. And that's exactly what they're telling us happened. In 1924, Castle Gate number 2 suffers an explosion killing 171 miners. And you see, telling us it's a castle, but most people will focus on this mining story. Which I do believe is a story, but yet what of these people? We're told they were mostly immigrants, looks like some Greeks, and even a Levi. But nonetheless, from the evidence that I saw, there's much more going on than we're told. Just a scene with this piece of petrified wood almost turning to coal and carbon. Again, a little truth in plain sight. And it was very smooth, very polished, but yet clearly turning to coal. And this is coal and carbon county. So here giving us a little BS story on the plaque, but then revealing the true history, perhaps. Very fascinating. I wonder if that tree stood exactly where it was. And here I panned across the street, and what do we see here? Some old world looking sheds leading into the under realms. And I did want to go explore, but this was not my destination today. And I look forward to coming back with a good flashlight and taking a peek. And this was a kind of interesting plaque just before I left. Another explosion at a mine, the Willow Creek Mine in 2000, not too long ago, taking a few lives. It marked the end of a short and troubled life for the Willow Creek Mine. It was sealed and reclaimed. Reclaimed by who? Play of words. And what I found interesting was dedicated by Matt Warner Chapter, 1900. E. Clampus Vitus. I'll have to look that up. And now I arrive to my destination. Not quite, but this was not too far away, and by accident, I found an abandoned mine area. Not too far from the mining town of Eureka, and this was just absolutely mind-blowing. It took me forever to get out here, and I was imagining the whole time being on a horse and wagon, bringing all my mining equipment and dynamite, and just impossible. Very, very remote part of Utah just out of the way. And here I was greeted by this no trespassing gate. And I was going to jump through here, but I thought Chief would have a hard time, even though he wouldn't have. He would have found a way. But I was discouraged. I was also discouraged by this dead deer. And so I opted not to walk down this little path, which would have been the easiest way to get to this mine. But I kind of took it as a sign and drove down the road and opted to fly my drone. And here I was arriving in this little town that I was not expecting, Eureka, again in the middle of nowhere out in the west, and this was a short-lived mining boom town. And what I found is nothing short of a Tartarian town in absolute disrepair and beautifully preserved. And I was not expecting this one. It was not on my agenda. A real treat. As you can see here, look at the different types of brick and block. And in many towns, this would have been facaded over. And here we do see facading, very intricate facading on this building next door, covering up the brick. And here, this one is completely abandoned. The Shea building. What a beaut super intricate and i'm just not sure i try to go back in time in my mind and imagine what the builders or the inheritors of the buildings were thinking did the stone come first and the brick come after in some cases we see examples of brick turning to stone but i don't think that's what we're seeing here here's a closer look and we do see some buildings that look like they've been bombed and those kind of lend to the idea that they were all in disrepair and were simply renovated. Here we can see facading and what looks like block work, typical in the old world. And here selling Levi's back when? Now I think it was for lease. 
Here again, I'll look at the side of the building. I mean, how many repurposings has this gone through? Clearly, there used to be openings here. We see the squareness. Mind-blowing to find a place like this tucked away in the middle of nowhere. Here's an example of a brick building completely exposed to the elements. And again, this block work intermingled. This was a beautiful building at one point. Maybe two or three hundred years ago. Stone. Here, the old doorway. Unmatching brick. And this. This facade is completely out of place in this remote, damn near ghost town in Utah. Here, another little look. And again. Just mind-blowing. The Gatley building. Obviously not the Gatley building. A cheap repurposing. Again, of something that looks like ruins of Pompeii. We have to remember the Mormons arrived in Utah in the 1850s and 1860s, focusing on Salt Lake City, an area like this. This is way out of the way. Again, an hour to an hour and a half from any major city. And here we begin seeing the disrepair. So they didn't even bother with brick on the face of this building. Now this is what we would expect in the late 1800s. Some old west facade, cheap barn wood, and yet just making do with this damaged brick building. Here again, this brick on the face is different than this one. And here some nice wooden facadage, it appears, but clearly of the old world. I mean, look at the ruins here. Just completely turned four windows into two. Just chunking out the center. No way. I mean, we're talking a hundred years. And this is no different than the small town that I live in. We see the same things. Rounded brickwork for windows that we don't see. And everything for rent. Nobody even knows this town exists in Utah. I certainly didn't. And I've lived here... 20 years. In here, they didn't even bother rebuilding this building. Just turned it into some kind of signage and utilizing it as a side entryway for this building, it looks like. In here, we see a little entryway into the under realm. Could just be a little storage. And here we can see it from this side. I hope to scan this area on Google Earth soon. I'm sure it will reveal a lot more from above. And this is the one I wanted to show you. Much of this town must have looked like this when the people arrived. And we do see brick even on this junky little building. And they just kind of beefed up the structure with this cheap wood. And I have a feeling this building was never repurposed. It's just sat here in this condition. And yet a lot of signs of the old world remaining. Metalwork. And what would a town be without a little cathedral? This one was kind of junky, but there was a nicer one just up the road. And it seemed to be brick and elevated off of the street level. Not looking that impressive with this cheap wood facing over it, but I'm sure it was remarkable in its day. And now I would arrive to my destination. And my purpose was to fly my drone, which I did. But I'm really glad that I walked around with the camera. And this was a short-lived mine, we're told. And I just don't think that's what we're seeing here. This looks more like the remains of a massive castle or dam. It really did seem like a dam. Like perhaps this was a star fort. And this looked like some old world concrete and bricks scattered everywhere tunnels, and much more material than I think could have been brought out here in the late 1800s. And it wasn't just the infrastructure we see down here, but we have roads cutting all through these mountains, old abandoned roads. And we do see the use of rebar in this particular area. But again, I'm not sure how much is original and how much may have been covered up by the inheritors. And some first class graffiti here. And I think some great mysteries to be uncovered in lesser known areas like this. Here we can see the corner of a little section. Clearly rebar in there. 
And again, like I mentioned in my past video, rebar not being a good idea. And I think we see exactly what the rebar has done here. A really ghostly feeling is what I got in this area. I did not feel like I was wandering around an old mining camp of the 1800s. Not the work of some primitive pioneers. And I have no doubt somebody probably did come out here and mine. But what were they mining? In some cases, repurposed metals, different tech, motors and turbines, copper. And here's what I wanted to show you. You see the brick just sandwiched in here? Being squeezed out? Were it not for all the bricks in this area, I might have believed some of these stories. But this just doesn't make any sense. Again, someone has come out here and scrapped all this metal. And so much is buried. A whole archaeological excavation could be done here. And I'm sure would reveal a lot more. Most people are just going to focus on this main site. But as I ventured further back, it just went on and on. Not sure what has happened here. And sometimes I think the graffiti is fake. It's so stupid. Seeming like something to detract the eye. And here when I fly over the drone, this really looks like a dam and some kind of hydroelectric apparatus. It was kind of dangerous with the snow running around with Chief. He is very careful. Seems to sense things that I can't. And here we have a little access. I believe I poked my camera in there. And here's what that looked like. And we could see what looked like steps here being reclaimed and almost looking natural. Here chunks had fallen and there was water dripping. I think that we're seeing perhaps 10% of what existed here. And here I want to show you these old bricks. These actually with their rounded features may have been some kind of piping for something hot. Perhaps a smokestack. But some areas just littered with bricks. Really seeming like a bomb went off in this area. Everything was so scattered and really seemed like it happened so long ago. And here I walked up the mountain a little and we see things like this. And it actually looks like this block was pulled out of here, revealing an inner chamber. And I wish I would have stuck my camera in there. And what I found suspicious was how in some places we had perfect seeming concrete and in other places just ruins of what look like some of the oldest walls I've ever seen. Here we have access and this was indeed some sort of concrete but how old I just don't know. Out here in the middle of nowhere in a time before cement trucks and here a closer look at this old wall leading into the under realm. Who knows how many stories, and I think the whole mining operation was just coming out here and digging and pillaging. And really all we're seeing left is the faintest signs of whatever massive infrastructure existed here. Here I wanted to show the concrete and the size of the aggregate stone used in the mix. Just unbelievable again, not something you're mixing by hand. And when I fly the drone overhead, you really can see how this looked like some sort of a dam. A very remote area. And here's a good example of what I think may have been a dam. The water would have spilled down here, turned some turbines, and then been diverted in another direction. And if that was the case, a small dam, but nevertheless, not seeming like mining. And everywhere you walked here, it felt hollow underneath you, even if you were walking on dirt. And here, just some random walls sticking up, bricks laying around everywhere. And I wonder if this concrete wasn't just originally finished with a facade to make it look like beautiful stone. And here we can see bricks, and even the earth just being really red in certain spots as if the brick had just melted and all we see is a stain on the ground. Here I think someone was just goofing around and stacking bricks. But were they intuitively reenacting what the finished construction may have looked like? I'm not sure, but all as I know is there are bricks 
scattered all over here. This was something I'd seen online, and there's supposed to be a larger one somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Lots of these little arches, and very mysterious. Perhaps this had a giant chimney on it, but I don't see much signs of burning on the inside. But nevertheless, very intricate concrete work, these angles, very advanced, not the work of some miners in the 1800s. Very exciting. It's been a week or so since this trip, and it's reawoken the excitement I felt on that day. Here just an example of some random tunnelage, and I think this is just completely buried. I think this would have been a full-size archway at one point, and we can tell because the mud, or brick flood, was coming from behind it and didn't fill this hole up. Just enough to where we can actually poke in here, and there we go. That's leading into nowhere, into the mountain. We do see a little light, so there must be another opening back there. But otherwise, another foot of earth, and this would be completely buried for all of time. This probably being the best evidence that we're not dealing with some old 1800s mining operation, but something very advanced. And I want to go back out here soon, when the snow melts, and document as much as I can before the sanitizers of history have their way again. And the last thing I want to show is this random little spot. And it looks like somebody was storing coal here at the first glance. But the more I looked at it, I think whatever was here turned into coal, melted down, and we see layers. Something of an organic nature. And this really occurring in a reset type environment. And we can see that this coal was dumped here at one point, the way it's encased in this concrete, but also seeming to have been hit so hard by some kind of heat that it's reformed into what would appear to be natural layers, but we know better than that. What was actually stored here and melted. Very fascinating. And really, what is coal? Is coal something that takes millions of years to develop, or is it something produced very quickly in a reset? and almost seeming like it had a metallic nature at one point. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed, and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.